So I'm going to talk about uh, uh, you know the standardization process in uh, zk proofs, which we've been hearing about uh, uh, today and yesterday, and I'm sure you've heard before. But anyway, so so uh, okay. So let me talk about standardization. So uh, I think the uh, I was cautious whether to put it. I, was, I thought maybe people would have talked about it before today, but uh, uh, I'm actually glad I'm putting it. Um, because we are kind of like in the, in the day of standardization. So what does it mean to standardize, right? So, uh, uh, okay, so to bring uh, into conformity with the standard, especially in order to assure consistency and regularity. So uh, in some sense, it's that benchmarking uh, conformity. And, and what does it mean to, uh, to uh, what is the standard? Uh, so if you go, they go to Webster, so, Okay, so it's a banner for uh, writing cry, etc. but maybe that's not what we want, but uh, it is something, something established by authority, custom, or general consent to mod, uh, as a model or example. Uh, so really, so this is something, uh, a benchmark that we know uh, what we're doing, uh, that we know what we're doing is, is, is good enough. Uh, so, so this is, in a sense, the, uh, the goal of a standard, but we know there's more, <coughs> so, uh, um, sorry. Um, so, uh, so really, what, what the, the goals of for for this uh, for standardization process in general? Uh, so, really, what it is, what you want to create an agreement on an object uh, to making to make the world for more efficient. So, so this is something different than uh, setting a, a, a standard or, or benchmarking just to create agreement. Uh, and this is for interoperability, for modular design, just to help uh, us build a better world more efficiently. But there's really also this issue of benchmarking, that uh, to know that what we have is good enough, uh, and uh, different levels of goodness, et cetera. And this is also important, so we are playing between those two things. Well, the other reasons uh, such that they're prote protecting business interest, you know, in actually most of the, much of the world, uh, uh, some of the bodies, this is the main goal, but uh, we don't want that, or just to say that we don't want that, so, so just put it aside. Uh, um, but another issue, but another good thing about standards, and actually the process actually was uh, said earlier, uh, is, is the process of standardization, is getting people together. And specifically getting people from different walks of life, different backgrounds to agree on something. This process itself, as I'll tell you in my experience, is really, it's a great thing by itself. Um, so uh, um, anyway, so. But a few words about standardizing cryptography. So we've heard the talk uh, earlier uh, uh, about this, uh, you know, uh, uh, some great points were made, but let me just uh, say, you know, maybe with some repetition, but uh, uh, these points again. Uh, um, so, so when we standardize crypto, so, uh, so the f first thing, the obvious thing is to, uh, you know, standardize the APIs, like any software, uh, uh, the, uh, the interface formats, whatever interfaces they are. And we, of course, we want to standardize uh, the, 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 the operational correctness, uh, like, again, like any software. Uh, for instance, you know, if you decrypt what you encrypted with the same key, you get the same message, great. Uh, uh, but this is, uh, you know, most standards uh, stop here, uh, but, uh, uh, but for crypto, it, there is much more to go. So, so, so how do standardize security? You know, so uh, it's really kind of think about it. it it's, a, it's, it's a hard question. Uh, um, in fact, how to even uh, specify security requirements is not, it's not, uh, uh, it's not always agreed, but there are many different ways to specify security requirements from, from certain objects, uh, even simple ones, let alone complex ones. Uh, but even how to convince people that uh, we actually need uh, a security requirement is not uh, trivial. So uh, I can tell stories from, uh, you know, war stories from 95, 96, I was a French, uh, 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 you know, PhD graduate, uh, working at IBM, following who was Hugo, Hugo Kravchik here? No, no I'll, I'll tell about him anyway. So, uh, and I was, uh, uh, I was following Hugo, he was uh, left leading the, uh, he was involved in the standardization process of uh, IPsec. People remember what IPsec is, everybody knows what IPsec. You know, it was still, uh, the old days of the, the internet was still fledging. We were all naive and optimistic. We were sure we we're going to design it right. Uh, uh, you know, IPsec is going to be the protocol of choice. You know, all the traffic is going to be encrypted at the IP layer. You know, no traffic hijacking, no nothing. 
you know, didn't work. Also, these were days where, you know, Section 230 was just passed. We've still a good thing. We didn't know what it's going to bring us uh, today, but never mind. That's another story. But, uh, but anyway, so we were, uh, uh, you know, in, in the ITF, standardizing IPsec, and, uh, and, 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 and they, it was really hard to convince people there to, to, to make the point that uh, one is to, you know, standardize security, that it's a security protocol to actually have notions of security and actually make sure that whatever we standardize meets those notions under some assumption in some model. And uh, I remember, you know, there's some very vocal people there, you know, you know uh, really making Hugo's life hard, you know, this self-appointed cryptographer is trying to make us do extra work, it's, you know. So it's, it's uh, and then Hugo, in his calm Argentinian way, and very, with his charm, you know, very calmly answers everybody lengthily and friendly and with a smile and kind of diffuses all, uh, all, all antagonism. I learned a lot from this process, not just about crypto, but how to deal with people. But, but, uh, but uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I think the, maybe the, the uh, well, it, eventually they were, you know, PSEC was standardized, you know, that this was specific about uh, 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 HMAC. And I think that maybe the great thing about HMAC, maybe this is the one first uh, 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 cryptographic scheme that was standardized kind of, Kind of not exactly, but almost exactly, because it has a security analysis. There are other schemes which are slightly more efficient, but did not have any, and for good reason. So, but it's really a, a great win for, for Hugo then. So, so just the fact that they, there should be a security uh, requirement uh, uh, is, is, is something. Maybe to the people sitting here, it's not, uh, it's you know, you don't have to convince you, but just to say that it's not so obvious to many other people. Um, and uh, anyway, so, um, so, so then, okay, once we uh, kind of agree on a security requirement, uh, 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 whatever it is, then what, uh, what assurance do we require? Uh, uh, you know, we want the proof, so we will proof the very reduction usually, you know, by, to what assumption and what parameters and how to, how to put, you know, the assumption against the parameter, how to compare reduction to one assumption with some parameters versus reduction to another assumption with different parameters, you know, what's better, what's worse, uh, 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 and then uh, what kind of cryptographic proof we want, I mean, do, do we allow heuristics such as random workers, or do we not, I mean, do, how, how far do we go, you know, programmable, not programmable, you know, how to talk about all those things and understand them, and it's hard. And once you actually want to standardize and, and, and compare things, it's not, it's not easy, it's not trivial at all. Um, and then, of course, it doesn't end, end there, then it's what level do you specify the code, right? So it's not enough to specify an API, you, spe you standardize uh, a security uh, uh, transform mechanism, so you want to specify it down to the, you know, to, to the, uh, in a specific programming language, in what programming language? Uh, uh, do you want to, uh, say, specify everything down to the, to the, uh, to, to the, uh, uh, to, to the machine code and the specific uh, uh, hardware? Uh, uh, do you want to do, uh, 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 you know, PL style analysis, automatic analysis, so, so these all things, I mean, it's not clear where to stop. I mean, uh, uh, it's obviously, uh, it's many different things, but where do you draw the lines? Uh, uh, so standardizing crypto is, is really far from trivial, even for very simple things, uh, um, to, do it, to do it right. Um, and, uh, uh, and then standardizing protocols, it's even more so because protocols are really complex objects and not just simple schemes. Uh, uh, um, so the encryption, of, or, or, you know, encryption signatures are not, even, are not simple by any way, but, uh, but protocols are even more complex. You know, there are several parties, different concerns. You know, it's, it's hard to capture security. Uh, uh, again, it, it, it's, it's not clear what, how to do that right and how to standardize and compare and benchmark protocols. Um, and then it also depends on other mechanisms. I mean, you can say that all you always depend on other things lower than you in the stack, but since uh, protocols are kind of higher in the stack, they will depend on more stuff. Uh, uh, on the networking stack and also on the, you know, the actual network you, you work in because it's distributed. Uh, uh, so again, how do you think about all those things? Uh, so, uh, uh, so you can imagine that uh, uh, when uh, I was approached uh, last January, a year and a half ago, uh, by, uh, by, by Shafi, you know, saying, uh, how about, uh, uh, you know, do some standardization to zero knowledge. We just did, we just started the standardization for uh, 
FHE and it's great, uh, let's uh, do that. So my, my first reaction is like, what? You know, we, we are so far away from there. Uh, 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 you know, let's start crawling before we do marathons. It's just, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but then uh, she insisted, you know, she said, you know, but people are actually using it and, uh, uh, and we're gonna have to live with whatever they do no matter what, so why don't we just try and make it better and with whatever way we can. Um, yeah, okay, and, uh, but, uh, but, but, but where do we start? And how do we even think about these things? What, and what really can we standardize? So uh, then she said, you know, why not just do it one step at a time? Let's just have a meeting and uh, whatever, whoever is involved and have a committee and a meeting and then we'll see what happens. And um, okay, and this is what we did. Uh, and it's really, in retrospect, it, it really, well, we don't know where it's going yet. We're still in, in, in you know, a year and a half into it. Uh, uh, we did a lot of progress, but still in the first stages. But it, it, I'm, now I'm sure that this was the right thing at the right time. And there was no, uh, I mean, th this is the thing to do, even if it looks crazy. Uh, because, as we said, the process is sometimes even more important than the end result. And the process already proved itself, even without anything else. Um, so, so here's the steering committee uh, 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 that uh, uh, the Shafi, and I think people with credit that organized it started with Shafi, Aviv Zohar, and Daniel here uh, put together. I say I would say it maybe more in the end, but if I forget, you know, Daniel has been amazing for this uh, process. Without him, nothing would have happened. Uh, uh, but uh, anyway, so this is the uh, the steering uh, committee. Uh, in fact, I think Daniel is not even written here. Why? That? That? Okay, never mind. Okay, we will discuss it later. But anyway, so so uh, uh, so uh, so, uh, and then we had uh, 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 our first meeting. We just uh, pub publicized it to whoever we know. We tried to to reach uh, everybody that we can, uh, and and this was the first meeting. Uh, uh, I know how many it was sixty something people, right? So yeah, and uh, uh, and uh, it was uh, it was nice, and there were lots of nice pictures, and. Uh, um, and, the, uh, and then, the, you know, the, the, the agenda was, you know, so also what do you do in such a meeting, right? You get some people together and you do maybe a couple of plenary talks in the beginning to, you know, to make everybody feel together and feel happy and then what do you do? Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so what we did, we kind of again took example from uh, uh, the uh, home of encryption uh, uh, effort. So we said, okay, let's do uh, 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 three uh, uh, tracks. Uh, to split out to three groups, and uh, the tracks that we did were security, we called it, uh, uh, which essentially was kind of the theory people, and kind of algorithm definitions. Uh, uh, and then we had another group of applications, which were people trying, like, uh, let's see what the applications we have. And uh, we had implementations, uh, uh, which is a third group, and, and each uh, breakout group met for quite a bit, uh, quite, a, quite a number of hours over two days, uh, I tried to uh, hash out things, people to explain what they were doing, and we trying to understand what everybody else is doing, and try to come up with some document uh, uh, to, to come up with, uh, uh, to summarize uh, uh, what happened. Uh, and we did that, and uh, uh, it was uh, very uh, rewarding. Um, and uh, and the, the takes, you know, that's maybe my personal take from the uh, from documents and from the being there, correct me, uh, if, uh, if you think differently. So uh, first, there was an immense interest in putting uh, uh, zero knowledge into, into practice by a number of different uh, uh, applications, many different people, which surprised me. Uh, uh, and then there were three main, three main application layers that we, uh, uh, we came up with. I think this was kind of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the one important first step. So, so, so one is publicly verifiable non-interactive succeeding knowledge, kind of like uh, zero knowledge snarks. Uh, and this is like for financial transactions, uh, uh, blockchains, uh, Zcash for instance. Uh, and and what, what's important for those uh, applications is succinctness and, and verify, uh, uh, verifier efficiency because the verifier you know, is everybody, uh, uh, all the miners, uh, and transparency. Uh, in particular, the reference string, etc., should be transparent. Um, then another uh, setting was, uh, 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 and, it's, and, it's, and it's supposed to be non-interactive. It's very important, that, of course, that it's non-interactive. Uh, second setting is designated verifier non-interactive zero knowledge. Again, non-interactive, but this is something that's a different sort of applications 
for anonymous uh, credentials of supply chains, provenance of data with secrecy. So here, uh, uh, actually, the prover uh, is the guy that's supposed to be efficient, because often this is the weak guy. Uh, uh, and, and he wants succinctness, but maybe not as succinct, depending on, on the application. Uh, and, and again, composability without a proof, because if you want to do things over and over again, uh, uh, or, or, or put together uh, uh, credentials, etc., so you need composability. And a third uh, setting was interactive zero knowledge, uh, um, which is uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, for uh, running within uh, uh, other protocols, the PC protocols, etc. And there, you know, it was uh, more like uh, uh, application specific, but uh, overall uh, uh, efficiency and amortization, because you run many of them usually at the same time uh, uh, within the context, etc. And so that's, uh, that's one thing. And another thing that came out of this that I, I think is that we need a common language and common APIs, because otherwise you cannot work. Uh, uh, and when you say APIs, it means that really APIs for, for you know, formatting and fields and what fields are what, and also, but also for security uh, APIs, uh, for, for zero knowledge in this, in this context. Um, and, um, Okay, so and it's, and it, was, it was kind of like, it seemed clear that most of the interest was in the first, uh, in at least the people in the, in, in the room, then was, the, was in the first, uh, uh, the first applications, you know, SNARKs, uh, second was the second one, and the third was uh, relatively few people, and this feeling was enhanced in the second meeting, which I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, um, so, uh, so, so, so some interim work that we did. Uh, um, so, uh, so first, we, it, it took a while to actually twist the hands of the people who were supposed to do it and people in the, in the first meeting, but it, we didn't do it. And uh, uh, we got a, a summary document from the three uh, breakout groups, which actually was very useful. And then we kind of saw that there was really interest, uh, uh, and we, it was clear this is something that's going to continue, that something is going to be not a one-off thing, so we should take ourselves uh, a little bit seriously. So we set uh, a charter and a code of conduct and some standardization process, which we luckily took from NIST, it took from uh, IETF, uh, uh, and, um, and it was, uh, it was, uh, so, so we, 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 it, but we, and, and we set some process for ourselves, um, and uh, and we, we and, and then we compiled uh, uh, a document. I think Daniel compiled a document, uh, uh, overviewing the technology uh, and, and setting the, some terminology. And uh, it, I think it, it's, it's a great document. I mean, even if you don't want to participate in standards, in you, but you are interested in zero knowledge. Uh, 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 it, it's really worth reading. Uh, it, it's broad, it's extensive, it, it provides an overview of what's there, what's the interest, um, and, uh, uh, and sets some common language and terminology, which is very important. Um, and then we set a, a second meeting, which uh, happened uh, uh, last April, so there was no, for some reason there's no picture of everybody together, but uh, there were lots of uh, small pictures. Yeah, yeah, oh, well, okay, too bad. Yeah, okay, too bad. Uh, sorry, so I, I took it for the wrong page on the thing. Okay. Uh, so, anyway, so, so, but the second meeting was actually, uh, uh, there were many more people. There were, uh, 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 whoops. Maybe I pressed the wrong thing. Yeah. See? No, I think I pressed. Oh, okay. Let's see. See, it's okay. Let me put that up there. Okay. Okay. Um, so, thank you. Sorry. So, so, uh, um, so uh, over 150 participants. I don't know what was the number. Something like that. So, so it's really uh, more than twice than the first one. Uh, and it was three days rather than two days, and uh, we had uh, many presentations, like around, I counted around 30 presentations of people about, from different, you know, for applications, for, uh, 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 from theory, and it was uh, 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 really interesting. Uh, there were, we had two panels and several breakout sessions on different topics, and, and, and most importantly, lots of uh, hallway discussions, really a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion there. Um, 
And, uh, and one thing that it was clear that the communities converge, at least the people, again, there, co converge mostly in, again, in the uh, Zico, Zico and old snarks, uh, which was the first bullet from before, uh, but not, ex not exclusively. So there, of course, there is interest in the other ones, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the most of the interest seemed to be in the public verifiability, uh, uh, efficient verifier, uh, succinct uh, uh, proofs in the, you know, for context of payments, uh, uh, blockchains, etc. cetera. Um, so, uh, uh, but then, and of course, there is a lot of innovation there. Um, so, and in fact, we have current, uh, currently we have uh, 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 three uh, uh, standard proposals uh, uh, that uh, uh, are for under discussion. There is a mailing list, they discuss on the mailing list. So you should, feel, you should uh, 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 feel free to, uh, uh, to look at the you know, join the mailing list, uh, contribute, and, uh, uh, and, and contribute your own proposals. But it's really, uh, it's, it's, it's a vibrant uh, uh, community and uh, uh, really participate. Um, so, so and what I want to do with the rest of the time, uh, I want to, uh, to talk more about uh, uh, the API and about uh, uh, the zero knowledge API and, uh, and talk a little bit about uh, the way we were thinking of doing it, which is again via this uh, UC framework uh, uh, that was a great talk about it yesterday with a great motivation by Andrew that you know, I could not have done it better, motivated better than uh, uh, what Andrew motivated it. Uh, uh, but it's really, uh, uh, it really seems like the more we uh, are dealing with this, uh, uh, it seems that uh, um, if we want to have uh, uh, standard, you know, a, a reasonable, good, useful standard uh, of crypto standards of cryptographic primitives, which are more than just the basic things of, uh, you know, encryption signatures and uh, of protocols and primitives that will allow for, you know, uh, construction of sound uh, uh, software uh, and applications uh, that don't just interoperate but actually are secure. Uh, then uh, uh, this, in some sense, is the only way we have to go. Um, I mean, it's not that it's perfect, it's far from perfect, and there are issues here, but uh, we just don't have any other, uh, any other thing. Um, so I just want to say one more thing about uh, uh, this versus, uh, uh, maybe I'll say it later, no, let me say it now, uh, um, uh, versus uh, uh, the ITF standardization process. So, so uh, in some sense, the ITF standardization process is something which is inherently uh, uh, orthogonal to security. Because what they, inter what they standardize is the API in terms of what goes on the wire. They have this philosophy of not standardizing things beyond that. So, so they now realize that there's sometimes that you have to uh, uh, standardize also things, how things operate inside endpoints, not just on the wire, specifically for crypto. Uh, uh, but it is very limited. And, uh, and, and the ITF is really in the, in the, uh, in the mindset of, of, of uh, uh, standardizing for interoperability, just what's going on the wire. We don't want to mess up with the, 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 the internal implementation because that's none of our business. Uh, and this is like inherently incompatible with, with security. Because if you want to, to talk about security, you have to talk about security at the APIs, not at the links, but at the APIs inside your, your computer between the, the, you know, the, 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 the application that called you and, and the protocol. And it's impossible to talk about security without that. And, and the ITF is doing, you know, in some sense, some crimes there. For instance, they, they talk about TLS security. Uh, it's, it's, really, it's really ridiculous to look at the TLS standard and say that it's secure or not secure because things are not specified there. I mean, the API between the TLS and the, the, the application is not even written because it doesn't need to be, it shouldn't be written if you talk about just a uh, communication API. However, you can't talk about security without talking about you know, the, the inter-process APIs within the endpoints. Uh, and in fact, I've been talking to people who are implementing TLS uh, you know, in a perfectly by the, by the book, but uh, in the endpoint, all the keys are sitting in some, in, in some, in some uh, 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 database that is accessible to everybody in the computer. Uh, uh, well, they are uh, complied by the standard. Nobody says otherwise, but, uh, uh, but you know, you cannot call it secure. So, uh, uh, and this is something where if you want to standardize security protocols, you have to do it differently. 
when you cannot do it kind of ITF style in the sense of interoperability. You have to go deeper into the guts of the protocol and talk about the API and also the implementation. Um, okay, this was just a side comment. Uh, but uh, that said, let me talk about uh, uh, how we're thinking about doing the API for zero knowledge, which is this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, using this uh, UC framework. So this is, again, it's a, it's a work in progress. So this, I, I, I uh, uh, stole the slides from Mutu, who gave uh, the talk uh, uh, in April in the, in the April workshop. Uh, I'm only to some point, because at some point I'm going to do something different. Uh, because I think we learned more than since uh, April. And this is still a, a work in progress. Um, OK, so it is indeed a work in progress. So, um, so anyway, so what is the, again, let's go back to the roots, zero knowledge, GMR, 1995. Uh, and, and the notion of zero knowledge there just says that, you know, why, how to, uh, uh, what's the idea of zero knowledge? It says for any uh, polytime adversary, uh, uh, there is a verifier, adversarial verifier, there is a polynomial time simulator such that uh, uh, this, you know, whatever the verifier learned from the interaction with the prover can be simulated by the simulator by itself, just knowing the input text without talking to the prover at all, without knowing anything that had to do with the witness. Okay, so this is uh, the, the basic idea of knowledge I think we all know and love. Uh, but uh, uh, now we want to actually use it in life. And, uh, and, and we know that uh, this definition doesn't compose. So let me not, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, tire you with uh, uh, example details. You know, I'm sure half of people here know, and the other half uh, they don't know, and that's not the place to learn. But uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the point is that the zero knowledge don't, doesn't compose in the sense that you can have, that it compose naturally, let's say. So you can have protocols that satisfy the definition, but still when you run two of those protocols alongside each other, or maybe the one protocol alongside something else, the all security breaks, the witness goes, comes out, there is no security whatsoever. So, so it doesn't mean that zero knowledge protocols it cannot be used in, 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 in protocol settings in general. It doesn't mean that. It does mean that the natural way to compose them is we think about, uh, like in programming, languages, you know, just have a subroutine and you call it, and then you have another subroutine and you call it, this doesn't work, okay? So what this means is that uh, uh, this definition is really unfriendly to building secure protocols, right? You have to do something else. So, so this is the, the problem that the UC is trying to, to resolve. And, uh, uh, okay, let me actually skip that, because I wanted to, I'm not going to say that. Uh, um, so, sorry, so, so, the, uh, so the, the, the UC approach is to uh, actually uh, uh, do something that you can use uh, uh, as an off-the-shelf subroutine as you would do in uh, uh, any uh, uh, you know, programming language, any you know, uh, 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 library of, of, uh, of subroutines uh, that you would do. Uh, so so uh, you do it just with security. Uh, so, so let me just say, so, so what is the idea? The idea is that, uh, again, the security of the system, of whatever, uh, 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 of the, the system that you build, the protocol that you build, uh, is only reflected in the way it, uh, it affects you know, the external uh, system out of it. Both the, the honest parties that use it, use it and the side effects to, uh, uh, through side channels, whatever, the ad adversarial effects. Uh, therefore, so in order to, to capture the security and functionality of some system, of your protocol, P, uh, what you're gonna do, you wanna do in two steps. So first you write an ideal system, and that ideal functionality that captures the desired effects. So it's important here. The desired effects are both the functionality uh, in the sense that you know, if you, you, you decrypt a message encrypted with the same key, then you have to get uh, the same message, right? Or in zero knowledge, you know, if the uh, X is in the language, you know, X and W really are the relation, then the verifier should say one. And the security, right? Uh, and the security means that you don't learn anything else. Uh, you, nobody learns what, more than what they're supposed to by the functionality. So it means the functionality should define both what uh, every party should learn from the interaction and also what every party should not learn and what combination of parties should not learn. So how do we do that, right? So then you have to, to, to write the functionality that, that does that. So we'll get to a minute to how to do that. Um, 
And, and then you say, so once you have that, then you say that the uh, uh, system is secure uh, for this functionality if it looks the same for any external environment. Uh, and and the, how exactly this is formalized, it doesn't really matter right now. Uh, but, uh, uh, but the point is that, you know, again, F is just there for in order to, to specify the effects. You don't really care about the specific efficiency of, of uh, uh, how F is written. Uh, um, Although for composition, we need F to be still for normal time. But the point is that this is kind of the core uh, of, the, of, uh, uh, of, of our exercise, because this is going to be the API. And the API is going to be this F that, uh, is, that captures within it both the functionality and the, uh, and the security. Um, okay, and we need an API that on the one hand we can realize, on the other hand we can use. So, so uh, uh, as usual. Um, okay, so, so just to say, so, so what does uh, a secure composition means, or se secure, you know, what the notion means is that, uh, uh, that you run the protocol, the, 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 co the composition uh, uh, and the, co the composability of this framework comes into effect in the following statement, is that uh, if you run the protocol, uh, 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 even in a concurrent setting when the protocol is running with, you know, concurrently with many other protocols or many instances of itself, uh, uh, running the protocol is as correct and as private as, you know, as if you would replace every instance of the protocol with, uh, 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 with this ideal functionality, right? So, uh, uh, so here is a system with uh, 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 two instances of the protocol. Here, you know, there's a man in the middle or a woman, a woman in the middle between uh, uh, two endpoints is running two instances of the protocol. And uh, uh, this should look the same to everybody as if uh, this uh, woman in the middle is, uh, uh, is actually interacting with this ideal function, two instances of the ideal functionality. And, uh, uh, and then the way it's formalized in, in the, the definition is that you actually take uh, uh, all these guys, uh, and so you have here the, the two uh, uh, adversaries, which, you know, for any adversary here, there is an adversary, the ideal word, the simulator, and then the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, other interaction, or calling protocol, if you want to call it, is replaced by, uh, 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 by an uh, environment which is just one of the versatile machine that tries to distinguish between the real and the ideal. Okay, so this is uh, uh, how uh, the, the, the definition uh, uh, works, and this is how the logic works. Um, and then, okay, so both, both the adversary and the simulator uh, for normal time, also the environment, never mind. Um, okay, so, um, so, so how do we know about how to realize things in, in UC security? So in general, you cannot uh, do it for any protocols. There are protocols that you cannot, uh, particularly for zero knowledge, you cannot just uh, do zero knowledge uh, from scratch with UC security as opposed to the actual definition, which is, looks like a bummer. But, uh, uh, but you also cannot do non-interactive zero knowledge from scratch. You need some setup assumption. Uh, and in fact, the same setup, setup, setup assumptions that uh, uh, um, work for non-interactive zero knowledge also work for, uh, uh, for, um, uh, for UC security. Uh, so uh, what we can do is with this uh, setup, we can actually set, uh, uh, realize it with uh, either with on its majority, but this is not the case here, uh, for, for us for zero knowledge, because we have only two parties, uh, or we need a common reference string, or public infrastructure, and some timing model, there are a bunch of different things. But for our case, for, for, for zero knowledge snarks, we're talking about a reference string. Uh, uh, either it's a, a, a publicly generated or publicly generated, but it's talking about a reference string. Um, so there are relaxations, but never mind that now. Um, so, so, so let's talk about uh, the, the vanilla zero knowledge functionality, the way it was uh, thought about uh, 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 earlier on. Um, so uh, so what, what is the API? So there is uh, this environment, which is, sits at above, and it uh, gives, uh, uh, the, pro the, it gives uh, uh, the prover, uh, here's ID, which is identity or whatever for the, uh, for the transaction. And here's an X and here's a W, a witness, and it gives uh, just X to the, to the verifier. And, uh, uh, and then uh, in the real execution, the verifier, the prover, the verifier uh, uh, interact, and then the verifier uh, uh, just gives out the output in the end. 
In the ideal model, there is no protocol. Instead, the proof and the verifier interact with a zero knowledge uh, a function, ideal functionality, and which works like that. So, uh, so first, the, uh, the prover gives the x and w to the, F -Z, uh, to the functionality. The functionality uh, 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 records x and, w, uh, x and w, and just gives out to the verifier the, the x and the one bit uh, uh, answer. So, uh, and that's it. So what this means, it means two things. It means that the verifier learns the right bit, which this is what it's supposed to learn. It also means it doesn't learn anything else. So it's completely, all the rest is completely hidden from it. So in the ideal world, you have perfect soundness and perfect zero knowledge. Uh, so, um, so this is great, uh, which is nice, but it, somehow it's, it's of a nice ideal functionality, uh, but uh, it's not really good for NISEC. And it's not really good for us, specific for the applications of uh, zero knowledge uh, SNARKs, because we, in particular, in this uh, application, in this uh, interaction, there is never a proof string. So uh, uh, the verifier just gets uh, the one bit answer. There is never a proof string. However, actually, we sometimes you actually need a proof string. And in particular, the applications, we need the proof string because you actually need the proof string in order to prove on top of it, right? You need to compose things. We need a proof string in order to maybe sign it, to show it later. So there is this proof string it actually has a meaning and it has value in the context of, uh, uh, of the knowledge snarks. So, uh, so, so this is too ideal in some sense. So it actually hides too much from, from the implementation. But part of the implementation, the proof string actually is important. So therefore, we need to actually write a different ideal functionality that captures that. And that's actually a lesson also in general that if you do you know, this style of writing security requirements, the way you write ideal functionality is very important because you can write the same thing you know, for the same primitive. You can, again, define, define security in one way and it works, and another way and it doesn't work. And so it's really important to do it right. So, uh, so here's another way to write uh, zero knowledge functionality for non-interactive zero knowledge. And this actually, this way is, is, is from a paper from, uh, I think, uh, 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 so uh, uh, growth of stroke skin is high. Uh, so the way they do it, actually, they, they, they do the, the, uh, the proof and the verification in two different parts. So uh, the first thing, the prover, uh, uh, goes to, uh, uh, well, let's think about how it works in music in the real world. The prover uh, uh, gets uh, uh, from whatever, from the, the person who calls him uh, uh, an X and a W, and it returns a proof. Well, not exactly, because there is a CRS. Uh, uh, so the prover actually uh, first gets a CRS, and, and then he goes and sends back the, the proof and the CRS. So this is uh, uh, how, uh, how the, the, the prover side. And then the verifier uh, will do, you know, will verify. But let's talk about the proof, the prover. So now that the, the NISIC ideal functionality will have to uh, uh, look like that. So it gets, again, the X and W from the prover. Uh, uh, it records X and W. Uh, and it gives X to the simulator, not W, because it's secret. Uh, X to the simulator gets some proof and, and reference string, whatever, and it sends it back. Um, yeah, um, and uh, thank you. And uh, and um, and uh, so, so the, again, here the string, the proof string, is part of the functionality. Uh, and then the verify side is the same thing, right? So it gives now the uh, that uh, reference string and the uh, the proof uh, and the X, and the verifier is supposed to answer zero one in the real protocol. And in the ideal protocol, the way it will work. It will again, the verifier will go give it to the functionality, and the functionality will just look up in its, uh, in its database to see if it's there. If it's there, it says OK. If it's not there, it will actually go back to, uh, uh, to the simulator and give it another chance to say, you know, maybe now you want to give it uh, a proof. That's if the prover was dishonest, et cetera. Never mind. So, uh, but anyway, the functionality doesn't say yes unless it actually sees a witness and the verifies the witness works. So again, we get perfect uh, uh, soundness and uh, perfect zero knowledge. And now we have a proof, a proof string. Um, 
So, so far so good, it solves a big, big, big good, but uh, in, the, in the 20 seconds that I've left, let me just say, okay, so now that comes the issue of succinctness. So the, the snarks have to be succinct, right? And uh, uh, there is an issue with that succinct uh, proofs, we know that they cannot be proven under some standard assumption, the only way we know how to do them, uh, unless, you know, one day we'll be smart enough to do non-black box reductions, then everything will be fine. We'll be able to prove snarks from one of the functions. So, but, uh, uh, but until then, the, we, we don't know how to do that. So the only thing we can do is to do these, uh, 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 these knowledge assumptions. And then those assumptions uh, 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 only work for a specific type uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, you know, adversaries and simulators, in particular, uh, in the context of, 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 of uh, UC security, uh, 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 what we have is that the, the type of, uh, uh, of, of extraction that we need if we do it directly on UC security, uh, uh, the, directly on the, on the protocol, is, is actually impossible, assuming uh, IO exists. But uh, IO exists, so it's impossible. So, uh, um, so, uh, so, so, so we actually we don't have any way to realize NISEC in the right way uh, uh, so that we can actually use it in a composable way for applications and then prove it. And so what are we doing? Kind of like, uh, uh, you know, we, we went up, uh, we went in, you know, a tall order, we went up, uh, to, uh, climbed up a tall tree and now we don't know how to go down, uh, uh, which looks uh, kind of a problem. But, uh, uh, but uh, luckily, uh, so incompatible with you, but luckily there is a way out uh, uh, and it can be done. Uh, in, in restricted settings, and this is again on, on, ongoing work, but uh, uh, the restricted setting is the following, let me just finish it in a second. So assume that we have uh, uh, um, uh, the proof is of a restricted form, that, that it, there is a seed witness, uh, uh, if there is a witness, you know, there is an X and there is a W which is the witness, but in addition we assume that this witness is structured, there is a seed witness which is short, and the rest long of the witness which may be long, is uh, actually computed in polynomial time from the short witness. And, uh, uh, and the point is, if this is the case, so, that, so this is the, the criterion that we want, and what we, show, what we show is that if this is the case, then you can actually have UC uh, 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 secure snarks such that the, 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 poor, the proof size and the verifier complexity depend only on the length of S the seed of the witness, and of course the proof of complexity is polynomial in the statement as before. And the, the point is that if uh, the, the obser to observation is that actually the, the, the known application of SNARKs, in particular Zcash, etc., actually this is enough. You don't need more than that. Uh, uh, so we are going to be good. So this again is work in progress. It's, it's been written. Hopefully it'll be out soon. But anyway, I'm out of time. Uh, analyzed in these algebraic group models that don't rely on uh, concrete assumptions, that don't have proofs on concrete assumptions. What do uh, you think about those? Are they so up for standardization? Uh, should we ignore them? What's your... Okay, so that's a great question because I don't know. Uh, so, so, uh, so, so, okay, so, so, so just those constructions, uh, you can show that they realize you see zero knowledge, you don't need this crazy thing, you do it in general, right, etc. I don't know. It's, uh, that's again the issue of, uh, of, of community decision, right? And the, the, the thing is like, what will happen uh, uh, if, uh, uh, if something will go wrong, right? So, uh, you know, so like the people in the, in, from our community, they're going, you know, kinds of, uh, 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 you know, to VCs and to people with you know, put money in those things that say we have zero knowledge proofs uh, uh, without assumptions, you know, no setup and no assumptions. Kind of like forget that there is a random work there. Uh, uh, then what do you do? Okay, but then one day somebody will break this and because the, the hash function doesn't work and then what do we do? Then all of us look crazy. I don't know. <laughs> That's my take, but uh, That's okay. yeah. yeah.